Hey guys, it's Kevin with Mix Coach. What I'm going to show you for the next two days is one of my favorite plugins. I never mix a record without this plugin. Now, this is Isotope 3. There is a newer model now, and I will be reviewing that uh, in the days to come. But I wanted to show you before uh, I stopped using this how much I use it and exactly what I do. Let's just. Uh, it, it's just an all-purpose plugin. I asked one of my mastering engineer friends, you know, I told him that I didn't have a whole lot of budget to, to do mastering, but what would he recommend? And hands down, he said this was the best thing uh, that was on the market, especially in this price range. So uh, what we have here is a song called Broadway. You've heard it before, and it happens to be the song download of the month this month at Mix Coach Member. So if you want to grab this song, uh, be sure you check out Mix Coach Member. You can find it at Mix Coach member.com okay now uh, let's just start at the top the parametric equalizer is a is a very cool tool this is not an exhaustive look at everything it does I'm just going to show you what I do and how I get the most mileage out of it the first thing I'll do because there's so many bands here what I'll do is I will usually show info and this first node I change it to a high pass filter because I filter everything and then you have more info and then this is the filter and then I'll narrow it down Okay, so let's listen to just a little bit of this song. And what I'm going to do, as you narrow this filter, if you see, there, you get a bump there. You see that bump? You can use that bump to your best interest. What we're going to do is we're going to bump it up and find the sweet spot of the song. And then we're going to carve everything out below it. So let's listen. Neon lights have never looked this good. Let's turn it on first. Neon lights have never looked this good to me. Okay, that's about the sweet spot. What I'm going to do is is widen it out now just a little bit so we don't have such a drastic bump. Neon lights have never looked this good to me. Now I'm coming home. Okay, and then you might add might want to add a little top end to it. I usually grab one of these higher frequencies here. Neon lights have never looked this good to me. Now I'm coming home to where I belong. Now one thing to keep in mind on these mastering plugins is that you can tend to go overboard with the EQ. You really want to keep your EQ within a dB or two. You really don't want to do anything drastic in the mastering. If you do anything drastic, I mean, I'm not saying that you should never, but in most cases, if you're having to do something very, very drastic, um, you might need to go back and look at some of your tracks. You don't want, to, you know, you don't want this to be the end all in most cases. Okay, let's just say you find a frequency that you, you can't identify, but you you want to either boost it or cut it. Let's take a listen. What I'm going to do is hold the Option key, and then you can press along here, and it basically cuts everything out except for that frequency, which makes it really easy to, to find things that are bothering you, say a sibilant problem, an S problem. Let's listen. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it's, it makes it easy to identify. If you hit this problem, you see down at the bottom, right there it says 501. That's 12.9 dB. This makes it really good for you know finding those problem spots in the EQ. Say a, a certain bass note's getting out of control, you can find this bass note. Maybe do a little cut, and uh, you, maybe you can do some uh, compression, which I'm going to show you tomorrow. Okay, so let's let's just keep going here down the left side the mastering reverb I hardly ever use it but when I have needed it, it it sounded really good and I'll tell you the only instance I've ever used it is when I was mixing a live recording and I wanted everything to sound like it was coming from one room so I just turned this on I really didn't change a whole lot about it maybe the room size a little bit um, and I adjusted the wet signal up just a little bit, and that was all it took. So hardly ever use a mastering reverb, but it really does come in handy. Now the loudest maximizer I use uh, all the time. So the loudest maximizer, let's turn it on, and what I want to do is pull this down to 1 dB, minus 1 dB. And the reason I do that is because most consumer-grade D to A converters, like the ones in iPods, or maybe not iPods, but some of the cheaper um, personal music devices, or even your cars sometimes, don't have 
the kind of converters that can handle all this gain that you're giving it. So for mastering, especially MP3s, I usually run it down to minus one. And usually you can actually get a little bit more of compression out of it without it sounding squashed and distorted. Another thing I do too is I'll turn the DC offset filter on. Um, it's just a, I don't know if it's a superstition or just something I, I'm used to doing, but I have seen bass notes that tend to ride above and below the line on a waveform and this eliminates that so it gives you more headroom so let's listen to this and i'm going to pull it down and watch how effective this is neon lines have never looked this good to me now i'm coming home now i pulled it down 4.6 db and if you notice i'm looking at this i don't want to compress or limit any more than a couple or three db four at the max but what's happening is you're changing the character of the sound if you if you do too much of this so if you if you find yourself wanting more and more again i would backtrack and look at your mix a little bit more um, another thing you'll want to do too is turn on prevent inner sample clips. Now I mentioned the, the DC offset filter and the min the reason I do minus one. This prevent inner sample clips also helps in that. I can't explain the science behind it but I know that it does and like I said this is just a kind of a, a primer on what I do in Isotope and I think you can get some mileage out of it too. So take a listen to this. Neon lines have never looked this good to me. Okay, so I want you to hear what we've done so far. All we've done is uh, turn on the parametric EQ. I've done a little low filter. We've done, got a little bump before it filtered out. And then I've got a little bump up here, one and a half dB. Um, no mastering reverb. And I've got the loudness maximizer at minus 4.6. We're knocking about maybe 2 dB down. We'll take a look. Neon lines have never looked this good to me. Now I'm coming home to where I belong. Okay, it's okay if that thing bounces around and hits uh, maybe you know 3 dB, maybe 4 dB, just for a short sample like a snare drum, and the sound of it still sounds good, then you're good. Because if it sounds good, it is good. So let's listen to the before and after so far. This is before. So come back tomorrow and I'm going to show you the things that I do with a um, multiband dynamics. Okay? And what I do with the harmonic exciter and the stereo imaging. So, so come back tomorrow and I'll show you the right side of Isotope Ozone 3 and what I do with it. See ya.